Okay, so we talked about free radicals and these dangerous free radicals. All of us have them. Anybody here eat things they shouldn't eat? I saw you at lunch. You can't lie to me. Anybody here smoke? I saw you guys afterwards. Those of you that walked outside and you were standing outside, like four or five of you smoking. Okay, so there are lots of different things that cause free radical damage in the human body. Even normal acts. In fact, I'm, I'm going to show you as part of a study that we did uh, with uh, some athletes. Even those people that are in great shape, that eat well, doing physical activity, doing exercise, actually generates dangerous free radicals for the human body. I'm going to show you what this looks like. So we ended up taking a, a healthy subject sample of 5,000 people, and we measured what their normal free uh, radical activity would be. And it was determined that around from 250 to 300 car units is what a normal average human being is, a healthy person between 250 and 300. That's our baseline. Between, uh, okay, so 300 to 320 is your borderline range where you're actually going in a little bit and you're creating excess free radicals. 321 to 340, you've got a low level of oxidative stress. 341 to 400 is a mid-level of oxidative stress. 401 to 500 is a high level of oxidative stress. And above 500, call 911. You're in trouble. So this is interesting. This is part of the interesting things that we find out as we begin to test cell food. What you're looking at here is a, a, an in vitro, a live study that we did, or an in vivo study, where we took and separated into three different categories, a group of smokers, you know who you are, the athletes, none of us, and the people with the uh, poor diet and that are o overweight or considered obese. So these are the three different categories that we actually separated them. And then we did it by age, from 18 to 30 and 31 to 50. And these are the results, the before and after cell food. These are on regular dosages of cell food. The smokers beforehand, the younger group, started at 380, which is, which is high, and ended up at 332, a dramatic reduction in uh, free radical activity. The smokers that are 31 to 50, look at this number where they start at. That's their starting point at 474 units of free radical activity. That's extremely high and extremely dangerous. However, after taking cell food, they dropped down to 355. Still high, but a dramatic decrease in free radical activity. That doesn't mean you can go out and smoke. That's not what we're saying here. We're saying here that cell food does eliminate that excess free radical activity. The next group, and this is the part that we found to be extremely interesting, athletes. These are people that are in good shape, that are eating well, and they're performing physical activity at least three times a week. Their baseline, acti their baseline free radicals was at 418. That's very high. Physical activity generates free radicals, and if you don't have a system in place to counteract that, that's what causes oxidative stress, cellular aging, and biological damage. So they went from 418 down to 303, and then the older group from 31 to 50 went from 389 down to 349. And then the last one, and this is probably the one that fits most of the categories, these are people that have poor eating habits. 18 to 30, the younger generation, 362 down to 298. Very, very good marking. And from 31 to 50, from 302 down to 265, extremely good, extremely good marking. So cell food is able to eliminate excess free radical activity despite a poor diet, despite smoking cigarettes, or in some cases, cigars. So what does this free radical look like? What are we talking about? What does this look like inside the human body? What you're looking at here are red blood cells, and you're seeing their failure to coagulate inside the human body. This white stuff that you see is actually a protein. It's actually a polymerized protein that actually happens inside of each of our cell structures. This is very, very common. In fact, this is actually not somebody who smokes, and this is not somebody who is overweight. This is actually from a professional athlete. This is their body after taking cell food. That's the way we're supposed to look. You see that all of the blood is interconnected. You see this black interconnecting tissue, uh, which is one of the protein constituents inside the blood. This is a very healthy person. This is what you're supposed to look like, and this is after normal dosages of cell food. This isn't something you have to take you know, two bottles to get back to normal. Eight drops three times a day. This is what you get. So we talked about professional and, and amateur athletes. We did a study a couple of years ago, actually it's been about four years now, at the University of Pretoria in South Africa where we took 45 uh, professional and amateur athletes, some of which competed on the Olympic team for South Africa. 
Uh, it's an 18-week study, double-blind placebo-controlled study, and there are some interesting things that actually happened from this study. We really didn't expect to see anything from the study, to be honest with you. These are world-class athletes. These are people that train all day long, that eat things that we would never even consider eating because we actually enjoy life. These are people that actually dedicate their entire lives to performing at the world's highest stage at the Olympics. These are people that don't mess around. So a 2 or 3 percent increase in performance or a 2 or 3 in increase, 2 or 3 percent increase in blood statistics is huge for these people because often the, the margin of winning is less than 1 percent for many of these athletes. So any type of improvement would be pretty considerable or so we thought. So we had relatively low expectations when we began this study. We thought, well, gosh, if we could see, you know, secretly we were talking about maybe a 3 or a 4 percent increase, boy, that'd be great. We could we could really take this stuff around the world and talk about it. Well, boy, were we surprised. After 18 weeks, we saw between a 9 and 27 percent increase in blood count categories and in performance categories. Specifically, we saw increased hemoglobin, increased red blood cell count, increased white blood cell count, increased hematocrit below the 50 percent level, which is what they consider doping, increased VO2 max, increased iron, and even more important for the types of athletes that do endurance type of performance, running or cycling, a dramatic decrease, in fact, it was, I think that was one of the highest categories, a 27% decrease in lactic acid buildup in the muscular area. This is what fatigues you. This is what makes you extremely tired. And cell food was able to decrease that by 27%. And of course, a decreased exertion level, which, which makes sense because of all the raised blood categories. Dark